Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Daily Doc Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Drew Timmermans. So tomorrow, which means today, if you're watching this video on that day, um, I'm going in for uh, some sinus surgery. I've had some chronic sinusitis for about 15 years. I actually uh, face planted while snowboarding uh, back when I was about 15. And so ever since then, I've had a deviated septum that I never had surgically fixed. And as a result of that, I have over time kind of developed some blockages in my sinuses. And so I have tried just about everything under the sun, uh, integrative, naturopathic, uh, allopathic, which is conventional. Um, and uh, I'm kind of now left with uh, heading in for surgery. And so uh, I will be heading in for surgery tomorrow. And so I wanted to uh, show you guys my post-surgical protocol that I'm going to be doing uh, I, uh, in terms of uh, helping to heal, um, but also helping to recover from the surgery in, you know, the anesthetics and the drugs that are going to be used um, to make sure that I stay asleep during the surgery and don't wake up because that's kind of important. Uh, and so I'm going to go through those. I'm going to talk about uh, how much I'm going to take, uh, for how long I'm going to take, um, because I think this is going to be uh, important for some people. Uh, maybe you're going to be having surgery soon or family members having surgery. Uh, some of these concepts too can also be applied to just general uh, tissue healing. So whether that's after an injury or something like that, some of these supplements are going to be good. So let's hop right into the first one. Um, so the first one here is kind of, it's a blend of a, a few different, normally I would purchase, uh, if I didn't have these individual ingredients, I would purchase one supplement together. Um, oh, real quick, I am going to link up the different supplements, where you can purchase them, a discount code uh, down below in the bio, uh, link description, whatever you're looking at, um, so that you can see. So. Um, the first few things are going to be uh, vitamin E, this one here, protocol for life, uh, vitamin E complex. We also have some zinc, uh, some vitamin D3 and K2, as well as a balanced methyl support. And so that's going to include not just B12, but also folate, B1, B2, B3, B5, uh, B6 as well. And so normally you can buy kind of... Uh, these ones here all together in a prepackaged post-surgery supplement. Uh, the one that I use traditionally is called Opti Recovery by Vitanica. Um, but I, because I, this is what I do for a living, I have a lot of these supplements lying around from things I've done in the past and whatnot, and so I can just individually piece them together. So uh, zinc picanolate is gonna be my preferred uh, source, and dosing for that, these ones here are 50 milligrams, which is a really high dose. Uh, normally you would take about 15 to 30 milligrams, but because I'm doing a post-surgery protocol, I'm gonna take 50 milligrams in just once a day. Uh, zinc along with vitamin C, which the vitamin C is kind of scattered through a few of these supplements, is going to be beneficial for collagen cross-linking. And so as I'm rebuilding tissue in my nasal cavity and things like that, or for your injury or whatever, um, the collagen has to cross-link to get stronger and to repair. And so zinc and vitamin C are heavily involved in that, and so I want to make sure that I have that. Um, next is going to be uh, vitamin E along with vitamin D3 uh, and K2, and so that's going to be vitamin K. And so these ones here are all kind of involved in the wound healing, tissue healing process. Um, the vitamin K is also going to be anti-inflammatory um, in certain dosages, and so my dosage on this one here uh, is 2,500 IUs per spray for the D3 and 90 micrograms uh, of the uh, vitamin K2. And so for this, I'm probably gonna be taking about uh, 5,000 IUs per day of the, um, of the vitamin D uh, in order to kind of help boost those levels. I've had my vitamin D levels checked in the past and, and those are typically pretty good. So I don't wanna go too crazy high because that can cause some issues on itself. Um, the other thing with D3 and K2 for me specifically is that uh, D3 and vitamin K are also involved in the regulation of bone growth and bone remodeling. And because part of the surgery is they're going to be taking out a piece of bone uh, kind of back behind towards the skull, um, I'm going to want to make sure that I have something in there for bone healing. 
So we got those out of the way. Let's move this here, move this here. By the way, this is a really, really, it's my definitely my preferred methyl cycle support. And so uh, if you're talking about anything homocysteine wise, MTHR mutations, MTRR, COMT, anything like that, uh, this one here by um, Priority One and formulated specifically by Dr. Paul Anderson is a big one. Uh, so next, um, obviously post-surgery, there's going to be a lot of inflammation just from the surgery that they did and that kind of stuff. And so I picked up uh, three different things uh, that are going to act slightly differently. The first is a really good curcumin, more so it's a uh, lipophilic curcumin, so it's a liposome. And that means that they basically took a liposome, which is basically like a fat molecule, and they put the curcumin inside this fat molecule because curcumin is very hard to absorb through your gut without it. Um, it can be absorbed better with black pepper, which is why a lot of curcumin supplements uh, will have black pepper in them. However, um, if you're really wanting uh, even better absorption, you're gonna be looking at a liposomal, and this is my preferred one based on some studies showing a better bioavailability uh, and in the bloodstream. And so that's gonna help with some of my inflammation. Uh, the other one, which I find is a really, really interesting product, uh, it's called SPM Active by Metagenics. So what they did here was they took specific eicosanoids from fish oil that have been shown in the research to be most impactful on inflammation and the different pathways. And so they encapsulated that so that way you could take uh, the fish oil a con or a piece of the fish oil in a super highly concentrated dose to get the anti-inflammatory effect. And so you're not gonna get the, the blood thinning effects with this, you're not gonna get the other stuff that fish oil can do, and that's fine for me because I just wanted this more so for the, uh, um, for the actual anti-inflammatory. Um, just so you know, because I forgot to tell you doses, the Theracurmin HP, I'm gonna be taking two capsules twice a day, uh, which is double the recommended dose, but I'm gonna be heavy hitting this. Uh, and methyl balance, uh, the recommended dose is one once a day. I'm gonna be taking one twice a day, again, just because I'm gonna want to be adding to that kind of support for the methylation cycle, which is gonna be involved in tissue regeneration and things like that, and so that's gonna be important there. Uh, the SPM active, the loading dose for this, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, four capsules twice a day, and so that's what I'm gonna be doing basically until the bottle's gone, which, that's eight caps a day at 120 capsules. I'm probably gonna only get about uh, 12 days out of it or so. Um, and so who knows, my, my math is off, 15 days. And so I'll be doing that for the next two weeks. The last antioxidant slash anti-inflammatory is melatonin. So if you didn't know, melatonin is actually a really potent antioxidant and it also helps with wound healing. And so for this, uh, normal sleeping dose that I would take would be probably three milligrams, maybe six milligrams, depending on the night. However, uh, for the post recovery, I'm gonna be taking up to 20 milligrams, which is the dose commonly used in cancer, uh, just because of how powerful the antioxidant capacity is. Um, and so I'm gonna be doing 20 milligrams a night, probably for just about the first two weeks. So moving on, obviously uh, they're gonna prescribe some pain meds um, afterwards, which I'm most likely going to take because um, opioids in the short term like that are actually okay. Uh, addiction rates are pretty low in that setting and so I'm not uh, overly concerned about that. However, I still wanna have something as a backup and this is my White Willow Forte, which is gonna have things like White Willow, bromelain, um, you know, there is some turmeric in here but I'm already getting that from the Theracurmin, um, some papain, some ginger, so a few different herbal things that are just gonna kinda hit uh, the receptors at a different way than the opioids would uh, for post-procedure and might help take the edge off the pain a little bit. Um, Cause I, you know, all up in here, no thanks for pain. Um, next is uh, reduce glutathione in uh, capsule form. Um, I am gonna be getting uh, nutrient IVs, so uh, vitamins, minerals intravenously along with the glutathione push as well but I'm also gonna do oral supplementation of glutathione. The dose here on this one is 400 milligrams for one, so I'm gonna do one twice a day. Um, this is by Integrative Therapeutics, another really great company. Now the reason I'm gonna be taking glutathione and getting that as an IV as well is because 
Um, during the procedure and being under general anesthesia, there's going to be a lot of drugs that are going to be going through my system that are going to help keep me uh, asleep, unconscious, all those things that we want during a surgery. However, a lot of those drugs are going to need to be metabolized by the liver, and so the liver kind of gets bogged down, um, and it uh, you know can sometimes take a while for that to happen. And then it can throw other things off because now certain things that would typically get metabolized by your liver are getting slowed down or maybe sped up depending on what drugs were used. Glutathione is the master antioxidant in the liver. And so adding this in supplemental is going to help me to metabolize and get rid of the metabolites from the anesthesia more quickly, which is going to be healthier for me in the long term. Um, Moving along here, we have an adrenal support. Uh, this one particularly is a glandular. Um, I've used this one before. It's not the one I, I always use. However, this one has a bit more glandular support, so I picked it up. Um, and so for those of you who don't know, glandular support means they've taken uh, uh, bovine or uh, cow adrenal glands, they've desiccated them and then encapsulated them. And so you're getting some of the actual organ from that animal. So obviously not, uh, not kosher and for vegans and vegetarians, things like that. However, a uh, really good source of uh, microdosing for cortisol. And so because surgery is going to be a traumatic event, I'm going to want to provide as much support for my adrenal glands as I can so that they can help to regulate the other functions in my body that they're responsible for, as opposed to focusing just on uh, kind of the massive stress that came in. So this is going to help my body respond better to the overall picture of stress from surgery. Um, there's also some herbs in here that are going to help with that. Uh, this one here has Eleutherococcus and licorice, which are both helpful for that. Um, sorry, dosing here is for this one is uh, one capsule in the morning and uh, at noon. And so I'm going to play that one by ear, uh, depending on fatigue levels, how I'm feeling, I might up it to two capsules in the morning, one at lunch. The last two are Chinese formulas. And so for those of you who don't know, I do also practice a lot of traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. And so the last two that I have here are five flavor tea pill and chan tong shui which, and for uh, if anyone out there is Chinese, I know that my pronunciation is terrible. But the uh, China Tong Shui is more for uh, what's known in TCM as uh, blood stagnation. And so blood is one of the energetic properties of a human in the TCM terms. Sometimes it correlates with the physical blood, sometimes it doesn't. However, because after surgery, they're gonna be packing my sinuses, things are gonna be congealed, and there's a lot of literal blood stagnation in that area, the China Tung Shui, the herbs in that formula are gonna to help to circulate the blood through my body so that um, it's not, I'm not in as much pain and also I recover better. Uh, in the in TCM world, uh, blood and chi stagnation both contribute to pain, and so that'll also help with the pain. And then five flavor tea pill um, is a, an herbal formula that is more antimicrobial in nature, and so that's gonna help with any uh, post-infection, things like that. It's got some immune boosting herbs, help me recover from the surgery and things like that. Um, I believe they're still putting me on an antibiotic, which I am going to take because uh, when you're working in this area, you get one tiny infection that goes to the brain and kaput, dunzo. And so I'm not playing around and I will be on the antibiotics for that. Um, I will just be uh, also using these as well to help support overall. Um, and then uh, the other one I don't have here is DHEA that I'll be taking. Uh, my levels are a little suboptimal and so I've been taking that to help build those up. That's going to help uh, just overall anabolic state and recover. And then the last thing which I don't have here but wanted to talk about was uh, uh, two peptides that I'm gonna be taking. Uh, one is a GHRP or a growth hormone releasing peptide. Uh, and the other is called modified GRF, which is a growth hormone releasing agent. And essentially those two peptides together, uh, when I inject them, they're going to tell the brain to release a pulsatile secretion of growth hormone, which then goes through the body. The body, uh, the growth hormone ends up telling cells to produce IGF-1, which is then gonna help in the repair process. And so those are growth hormone releasing peptides um, that are we use uh, pretty frequently in patients with growth hormone deficiencies or IGF-1 deficiencies. Uh, it's a subcutaneous 
instantaneous injection. Uh, my dosage on that will probably 100 uh, micrograms of each three times a day injected subcutaneously. Um, and I think that is just about everything that I'm gonna be doing. So I know this seems like a lot and I do talk a lot about, you know, not always relying on supplements and going back to the basics and things like that. But, you know, post-surgery is, is not the norm, you know, and just like, uh, you know, breaking a bone or tearing a muscle is not the norm. And so that might be a time where uh, doing something like this is indicated. And so, I'm gonna link all these. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me about these uh, and I will do my best to answer them. And again, thank you for watching and I will see you on the other side.